Hello, I'm Nils. Nothing in this video is intended as or should be taken as medical advice. In this video, I'll be talking about a number of different ways that we can increase our growth hormone levels and why doing so may be an effective anti-aging strategy. Human growth hormone or HGH is produced by our pituitary glands. It plays an important role in cell repair, recovery from illness and injury, and muscle growth. When we're young, our levels of human growth hormone are naturally high, and they stay high for our first three decades when we're in the prime of our lives. Around the time that we turn 30, they begin declining, going down by 15% every 10 years. Low levels of HGH are associated with a lower quality of life, increased risk of disease, an increase in body fat, and a very pronounced loss of vitality as the years go by. Some people say that HGH is pro-aging. Dr. David Sinclair is in this camp, but the results of the TRIM and TRIM-X trials conducted by Dr. Greg Fahey suggest that at least in the presence of several nutrients, having high levels of growth hormone can be profoundly anti-aging. In the TRIM and TRIMEX trials, participants were given injections of HGH along with DHEA, metformin, zinc, and vitamin D3, and experienced a reversal of many of the hallmarks of aging and reversal of epigenetic age. In both trials, people are carefully monitored to watch for possible problems this is important because some studies suggest that there could be an increase in cancer when injecting recombinant human growth hormone. But there are alternatives to injecting it. I'm currently approximating the TRIM protocol by taking DHEA, berberine, zinc, and D3. Berberine is similar in many respects to metformin, I'm not getting HGH injections, but I've been using alternative approaches to keep my HGH high. Ways of increasing HGH levels without a prescription and without injections include, number one, taking beta alanine, a precursor to carnosine. I usually take beta alanine along with some actual carnosine around 15 or 20 minutes before my workouts. Number two, taking arginine and or citrulline supplements. Now, citrulline is a precursor of arginine. Some studies suggest that taking either arginine or citrulline along with lysine has even more of an HGH stimulating effect. Number three, taking magnesium to increase slow wave sleep which in turn increases growth hormone. I take 360 milligrams of magnesium glycinate at night to increase my nighttime release of HGH. Number four, taking very low dose melatonin. Some studies suggest that taking a very low dose in the range of 100 to 300 micrograms shortly before bed, age in the transition to delta wave sleep which further increases our HGH and may be more effective in terms of increasing HGH than larger doses of melatonin. Number five, taking niacin. I take a relatively small dose, two or 300 milligrams of niacin a night shortly before going to bed. I actually take it because for me, it promotes deeper sleep. If I were taking it primarily for growth hormone, I would probably take at least one gram. But again, I'm taking it in conjunction with doing many other things that increase growth hormone, so I'm not solely depending on niacin. If you do want to take niacin, be aware that there are many forms, including nicotinic acid, nicotinamide, and several others. The form that increases human growth hormone is the nicotinic acid form, which is the form that also causes flushing. So many people find flushing to be very uncomfortable. So niacin is something that you may or may not want to include in your protocol. Number six, exercising regularly, high intensity interval training, 
and resistance training appear to be particularly useful for increasing our growth hormone. Number seven, warming up before exercising. Now, I don't mean jumping around like Richard Simmons. I mean literally heating up your body. When your body's hotter, it produces more HGH in conjunction with exercise than when it is cool. I usually take a very hot five minute shower right before my workout, both to relax my muscles and minimize the chance of injury, but also to increase HGH production. Related to this, number eight, heat in general increases HGH levels. So taking a very hot bath or sauna, even when we're not exercising, can be helpful. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that participants who engaged in two 20-minute saunas at 176 degrees Fahrenheit experienced a two-fold increase in their HGH levels. Another study found that taking a 30-minute sauna at 163 degrees Fahrenheit led to a five-fold increase in HGH levels. So the amount of time that you spend in the sauna appears to be very important. Number nine, reducing stress. Chronic stress increases cortisol levels, which can inhibit the production of HGH. Practicing stress reducing techniques like meditation, yoga, walking in the woods, giving yourself space for emotional release, such as laughing or crying or letting off steam when you need to also appear to be beneficial, not so much in directly increasing HGH, but again, lowering cortisol, which indirectly leads in that direction. Number 10, going to bed early. There's a spike in HGH, actually the largest spike in a 24 hour cycle that occurs only if we go to bed around somewhere between 10 and 10.30, but before 11. If we go to bed around midnight or 1 a.m., in other words, much later, the spike won't be delayed, we'll actually miss it. Number 11, getting enough sleep and making sure that it's high quality. The usual advice which would apply here is to get between seven and nine hours of high quality sleep, if you're able to, per night. Number 12, losing excess body fat, in particular, abdominal fat. The amount of belly fat that we carry is inversely correlated with our human growth hormone production. One study found that people who had three times the belly fat of the control group had less than half the amount of HGH. After losing the fat, their HGH levels returned to normal. Number 13, doing a form of time-restricted eating, which is eating breakfast, but not eating dinner, and wrapping up eating around 4 or at the latest 5 p.m. If we eat too close to bedtime, it can raise our blood sugar, which dampens our HGH production. Eating within two hours of sleep significantly suppresses HGH release. Number 14, fasting. One study found that doing a water-only fast for three days increased our HGH levels by over 300%. A full week of fasting led to an increase of 1,250%. Of course, if you're doing something like fasting, be aware that as with any intervention, it can have benefits and side effects. So do some research to make sure that that's the approach that you want to take. Other studies have found an increase of 200 to 300% after only two days of fasting. Intermittent fasting can also somewhat increase our HGH, but not nearly as much as doing an actual 48 hour or longer water fast. Number 15, reducing or eliminating sugars from our diet, including sugars from sucrose and fructose. Now, I don't know if the fact that I've been doing most of the things on this list to increase my human growth hormone is a factor, but I have found for myself that at the age of 71, 
I have been able to build and maintain more muscle than I expected. Now, again, I'm not saying that I have the biggest muscles in the world or whatever. There are many men who have bigger muscles than me. I'm just saying that for me, it was an improvement over where I was at when I started. This video is sponsored by Do Not Age. I take several of their supplements, including their NMN, NR, calcium AKG, fish oil, creatine, CERT6 activator, hyaluronic acid, and several others. For a 10% discount on their products, use the discount code PATHWAYS in all caps. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.